Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you are a guest today at Vista, um, either in person or on one of our many sites, a special welcome to you. It is our prayer always that this service is a blessing to all who participate, that we are fed, nourished, challenged, and enlightened to be God's people in the world with justice and with heart. The order of service is as printed in your bulletin, and we begin with the invocation. Please stand. We are gathered today in the name of God, our Creator, Savior, and Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our failures, but delights in mercy and new life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are made whole, and you are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. Worship God most high, sound every voice in earth and sky. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sing, brother, song in splendor bright. Sing, sister, moon and stars of night. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Benevolent God, 
You are the source and guide of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is harmful and destructive, and to treasure what is truly valuable and life-giving in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Testament reading comes from Ecclesiastes chapters 1 and 2. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun, and see all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I had toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish. Yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain, and their work is a vexation. Even at night, their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. Please join me in reading Psalm 49. Hear this, all you peoples. Give ear, all you who dwell in the world. You of high degree and low, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb and set forth my riddle upon the heart. Why should I be afraid in evil days when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me? The wickedness of those who put their trust in their own prowess and boast of their riches. One can never redeem another or give to God the ransom for another's life. For the ransom of a life is so great that there will never be enough to pay for it. In order to live forever and ever and never see the grave. For we shall see the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they had named lands after themselves. Even though they, are, they cannot live forever, they are like the beasts that perish. spoken, listen to the one who 
good news according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be judge or arbiter over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store up all my grains and my goods, and I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The good news. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. You may be seated. Well, my kids are hanging out with mom today who got called in to sub handbells. And I, my joke is, uh, she's a ringer. Because, <laughs> nah, there you go. Um, but my daughter did let me borrow her piggy bank. So if any kids are watching you here, you might have a piggy bank at home too. This one has undergone some reconstructive surgery over the years. It's fallen off the nightstand before, and it's got some money in it. But I asked her when I was borrowing it, how many of these do you think you would need to be rich? She kind of looked at it and studied it and thought about, you know, the things that she wants to buy, which are, you know, toys and things like that. And she goes, um... 50? So then that would be probably quite a bit of money. But I wonder, as we save, whether we're kids with piggy banks, whether we're adults with bank accounts, or more complicated things like 401ks or IRAs or all kinds of investment portfolios that I won't even pretend to understand or unpack, I wonder, why would you save something? What's it all for? When we're kids, you know, we think about, you know, the money goes in there uh, to, I don't know, save up for a toy maybe. If uh, mom and dad are helping you figure that out, that, you know, you need a certain amount of money and we're working on our math skills and things like that. As adults, um, I think... Sometimes our pattern of behavior doesn't really change. The toys just get bigger. The goals just get loftier. But we're still like those kids putting coins in or putting dollars in and wondering, how much is enough? And what's it all for? How many of you bought a Mega Millions ticket this past week? No shame. I bought one. And the clerk at the uh, counter said, just one? And I went, mathematically, yes, one in 10. There's no difference. Um, I think you're, you're 30 times more likely to be killed by a shark than, than win. Someone from Illinois apparently won, though. The 1.28 billion, with a B, dollar jackpot. And I wonder, what, what would you have done if you would have won? How many of you like saw it and started like making a list? Well, there you go, okay, yeah. I'm like, I would pay off uh, the debts of every person that I knew from college. I would um, start making, how many of you started making a list of charities? Yeah, like, okay, do that. How many of you started making a list of housing projects? You almost need to win the lottery to do one of those, you know, 
right? As you hear that number, $1.2 billion, I mean, of course, depending on how they take the payout, it'll be less than that, but still, even half of $1.2 billion is more money than I can sort of conceptually wrap my head around how to spend. And we get these readings today. The Old Testament readings read so wonderfully with such a lovely voice saying very ugh, things, right? Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Man's work is a vexation. It's all vanity. And the psalm, too. That the rich and the poor alike, well, when they die, where does all their stuff go? And then we get to our parable. A little exchange between Jesus and uh, someone in the crowd, and then this parable about the rich man. So first, Jesus engages with this person who's shouting a question at him. And uh, he asks him, you know, tell my brother to go split the inheritance with me so we can go off and, and do what I don't know. And Jesus says no. It's not what I've come to do. Friend who sent me to be judge and arbiter over you. And then he says, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Because it's that greed that sets the brother against the brother here. Clearly there's some tension here because the, uh, the man yelling out to Jesus is asking him, like, you tell my brother to do this thing. Apparently, they've tried talking, and it hasn't worked. So Jesus, you know, because he's a, he's a rabbi, he's a teacher, he's well-respected, people see his teaching, his power, and his insight. So he says, well, teacher, you tell him. Split the inheritance with me. And Jesus says, no, I'm not going to tell him to do that. But be on guard against all kinds of greed. And then he tells him a parable. So what is the purpose of the parable of the rich man that builds larger barns? Is it anti-saving? No, I don't think so. Is it anti-planning ahead? Eh, I don't think that's quite the point either. No, I think the parable is against greed in the way that it corrupts us. In a way that it hijacks our value systems. The things that we may know at a glance are good and bad. It hijacks the way we trust or don't trust God. So the man builds bigger barns. So he can say to himself by his own efforts, he calls himself soul in the parable. Soul, you're set. Eat, drink, be merry. You don't have to worry about anything. You have got your stuff. It's yours. You've kept it for yourself. Good job. You'll be fine. But little does he know His time on earth is short. And then the question is, then what was the purpose of getting all that stuff? So what are our bigger barns today? Most of us are not in the agricultural industry. Uh, Most of us don't own grain, grain silos. I grew up in a town with a grain silo. So like the, the whole idea of like big, building bigger barns um, yeah, made a certain amount of sense to me. Um, we could see farmers that would keep their own feed on their own lots with their own sort of little silos and things like that for their purposes of running their farm. But I think today our bigger barns, they look different, right? 
a lot of those bigger barns are kind of more on paper or on your electronic bank ledger. How much is there? And how much is enough? How much is going to be enough? And it's always, I think, this goal that you're chasing that's just out of reach. I think I've mentioned this again before in a sermon, but there was a Harvard study that was done asking people how much money you would you need to be truly happy. And they started off at people who were making at the time sort of the median middle class income for an individual, which was like, I will say $70,000. And they asked them, and the people that were making 70000 said, well, 140000 And then they went up to the next level, and they went to people making 140000 and said, well, how much would you need to be truly like set? And they said, well, 280000 And so it went up into the multimillionaires people saying, well, I just need double what I have. How much is enough? I think about the way that um, our economy works, and you've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, the economy retracting or recession or whatever, and for me, it's always confused me, and I find it sort of crazy that we measure our economy in terms of only if it's getting bigger. Like, has that ever confused anyone else? And again, not an economist. So maybe if you are an economist, you're like, well, it's about... But I think it's confusing to me because we are in one of the richest countries on the planet Earth. And we still say... Well, in order for everyone to be doing well, being doing well, we have to get bigger. And then when we get bigger, we have to keep getting bigger. And then when we get bigger, we need to keep getting bigger. When is it ever enough? And the church falls into this trap, too. This capitalist trap of what is enough. think about how we have so often as a church, not as a local congregation necessarily, I'm sure that's true as well, but as a church with a capital C, try to preserve our institution by storing up enough financial capital, by storing up enough resources, just so we're secure. But the problem with trying to preserve an institution is that then that becomes the goal. The preservation of what is, what we have, the protection of it. And then it's not the mission of where we're called to go. This is true in in our communal life together. It's true in our individual lives, I think, too the protection of what we have, the building of larger barns, so to speak. And what God is saying to us is, lovingly, caringly, you fools. The things we have are not just supposed to be trophies for like winning capitalism or doing the best job. They're resources to be shared, not stored up in barns, not kept behind glass, not locked away in some spot that they can sit there and, you know, maybe be there in case. No. God is calling us to use what God gives in a faithful way every day to go out and be about the things that God is calling us to be about, that God has always been calling us to be about, love and service of others. How many of you have driven past the place where, the, where Prince of Peace once stood this week? It's gone. It's a lot of rubble. The sign's still there, which I 
thought is an interesting choice that they're just kind of leaving the sign there right now. But I drive that way to get here every morning. And this morning it really struck me. As I'm thinking about this, this parable. And thinking about then the legacy of what's it all for? Because a, a faithful thing was done there. A faithful thing was done in saying, we're not going to protect this. We have run the race, we have fought the good fight. And now, the resource that that's, that piece of land is can be used for something that grows. Not growth in the terms of protecting what you have and multiplying it, but growth in the terms of loving and serving God's world. Because when we try to just protect what's ours, ours, then we find ourselves like the leader of Israel that wrote Ecclesiastes, who, if you couldn't tell, was not feeling great. Right? They just go read the text. He wasn't doing well. And he talks about something that I think is interesting because he says, you know, let's see, the exact phrase is, even at night their minds do not rest. I thought that was just because of our cell phones. But no. It's about this human condition that we sort of always had working on us. That we get all wrapped up and all these things that we want to control. All these things that we toil after, that we mistake for God's purpose for us. But thanks be to God, God says, no beloved child. That's all vanity. Forget that. That's not my purpose for you. You can't take any of it with you. And why would you want to? All we have every day, even our day itself, is a gift. A gift to be used, to be boldly spent, so to speak, for the sake of God's world. to be torn down if need be so that something else can be built up. To be given away. To be used. To be rich toward God. Because I think when Jesus says being rich toward God, he's not talking about like, well, just clearly give your money to the church. That's not what Jesus is saying. At least I don't think so. but rather to use our resources, to spend them, to allocate them like the church is everywhere. Because it is. So go spend what God has given you joyfully. Let go of all those things they give you vexation and stress and keep you up at night. All those things that are vanity and chasing after the wind. And give thanks that we are here now. We are alive today. And that is a mystery and a gift. Go live richly, giving thanks to God. Okay.
of the people, as we begin the prayers, there is a special prayer concern this morning. I received a call from Mike Anderson, one of our members, Diane, his mother, who is also a member of VISTA, is in her final stage of hospice. And they believe that she um, will be taken to God within the next couple of days, and they ask for your prayers during this sacred time for Diane and for her family as they surround her. We continue with prayer. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come to God in prayer for the church, our world, and all people in need. God, you are wholeness. Where there is division in your church, bring reconciliation and healing. Guide the work of theologians, Sunday school teachers, seminary professors, and all who provide instruction for the building up of your church. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Merciful, Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police, first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress, especially those we name in our hearts now. We pray for Diane and for her family and for all those she loves. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. O God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of the church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. Stand and greet your neighbor with God's peace as you are comfortable. continue with growing God's ministry through VISTA, and since it is the work of the people, we are inviting the people forward, or one person, to do um, the volunteer announcements. Good morning. I'm Judy Tyre, and I am a member of the Church Council. Um, it brings me great joy to know that we have a job description for a director of music ministries choirs and ensembles. And um, I know when I was thinking of Diane after hearing that announcement, she would love to have had this happen also. If you want a description, a job description, you can find it out in the back or talk to Pastor Heidi. Um, but this is one of our good news things, and I thank the committee who is working on this. Um, next, we have... Um, a need for more volunteers and more people to come up. The more voices we have, the more energy we have in this place. So please prayerfully consider volunteering. Um, we need readers each Sunday. We need people to help with communion. 
We also need people to help with our sound system, um, running it and doing the video and then also doing the editing. And if you find any of those to be your skill, please let us know. You, there are sign-up sheets and you can also speak to anybody at the church. Um, the Going Deeper Bible Conversation that meets on Mondays will now be meeting in person at 10 o'clock here at Vista. And then last on my list is we need to make our place more joyful. And so we are, going, we are in the process of bringing back our pieces of sacred art and putting them up in the gathering spaces. So if that is also one of your skills, please join us and help make this place our church. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for those of you that are watching online, please be patient with us. We are editing later in the week, and so you will have the live stream version of Vista's worship until possibly Monday or early Tuesday. Um, so as we get those volunteers, as we um, do those pieces that we need to do, um, please be patient and enjoy this worship and this service to the glory of God. Also, um, Pastor Dan mentioned this, um, former Prince of Peace is becoming Rise on Seven. And it was a legacy um, to the community when that church um, consolidated with Wooddale and together we became Vista. And for those of you that have a special place in your heart for all of the history and everything that happened in this building, know that our prayers are with you. Um, this week it is very sacred when God moves a ministry and we let go um, and sometimes it is of the barn or the building um, because there are so many memories in that place also the groundbreaking for rise on seven will be on Wednesday morning I know many of you have signed up and I talked to them they said over 130 people are coming and about 10 said that they were coming from Vista. So the only reason they wanted you to sign up is because they would have refreshments. And if you have not signed up and fill, fill the need to be there on Wednesday morning, um, please come. Just don't have a glass of lemonade if they're running short. Um, but we pray for that site as it becomes um, low-income housing, a special need in St. Louis Park. We are an offering. We are to share. As Pastor Dan said, all that we have, all that we are, um, and to make God's world a brighter place and let us stand and sing together, you are an offering, or we are an offering. prepare for the Lord's Supper, please know that all are welcome and invited to the table, not by the invitation of one of the pastors, but by the invitation of Christ. If you are at home, 
take a moment, go to the kitchen, get iced tea, get bread, get whatever you need, and join us. We will commune um, with all of our virtual worshipers at the end of communion, and I will commune with you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come. thy Thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Um, We ask you to come forward um, by rows, and you will be handed wafer and are to take a cup. If you choose not to commune um, by being handed something, the cup and the wafer um, are ready for you as well. And we need one more volunteer.
the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand for the blessing. The body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. God.